Preston Physics, Grade 11 Kinematics, Note 7, Displacement Time Graphs. As seen in Grade 9 and 10 Math, we can always change motion diagrams into graphs. In this first note of the three graphs we're going to look at, we're going to look at displacement and time. We're always going to have our displacement on our y-axis and our time on our x-axis. Now the point of origin is actually a point of reference, referencing some point that we're moving away from or towards or staying an equal distance away. In our first part of our graph, we're moving away from that point of reference. In the second point, we're not moving away, but we're also not moving forward. We're at rest relative to that point. And then finally, we're moving backwards toward the reference point. And we're moving a little quicker than we were moving away from it earlier. Now, when we're looking at the time, it's totally independent from the displacement and doesn't influence it in any way. Many features of this graph can be described quite easily using two major properties of a graph. The direction of the slope and the steepness of the slope. For this, we're just going to look at the first quadrant because it does change slightly in other quadrants. Now, if the direction of the slope is positive, this means that it's moving away from a reference point. Now, this reference point can be associated as zero or as some point that we've established in the question. If it's negative, it means that it's moving towards the reference point. Now, the steepness of the slope actually represents how quickly or how slowly the graph is moving. If it's very steep, it's moving very quickly. If it's very shallow, it's moving very slowly. This can be towards or away from the reference point. Try to describe points A, B, C, and D in the next graph yourself. We'll use a motion detector in class to fill in the bottom three graphs. Let's take a look now at the slope of a distance time graph. The slope of a distance time graph has a pretty special meaning. If we set up a little example here where we have D and T and we put our graph there, if we look at the slope, well slope is equal to rise over run, which is equal to the change in our Y over the change in our X, and in this case we have the change in our distance over the change in our time. If we look at the units for this, we actually get meters per second. Now looking at that, well those are the units for velocity. So we can make the conclusion that the slope of a distance time graph is actually equal to the velocity over that time. What we just did here is a little bit of calculus, just the starting points of it. Now a little bit more of calculus is looking at a tangent. What a tangent is, is like taking the slope of a curved line. So it's making a line as close as you can to a curve so that it represents that curve, but it's just touching one small point on the line. Now here we've made our distance time graph, we put a curve on there, and we put a point that we want to find the instantaneous velocity of. That means we're finding the slope of just that point. So we get our ruler out and we make a line that's just touching it, and it's mimicking the curve as best as possible. That's called a tangent. We can now find two points on this line, or use the point that we're finding the instantaneous velocity for in one other point, and find the slope. The slope will equal the instantaneous velocity at that particular point. We will be starting our acceleration due to gravity lab in class tomorrow. Continue working on the assigned questions from the previous notes, and try questions 24 and 25 if you'd like in your yellow duotank.